Um, so I'm gonna, I got 11.30, so I will kick this off. Um, welcome everyone to our joint webinar, Top Left and Scopestack. Um, so I'm here with uh, Matt and John and talking about projects. So um, just before we jump into that, just wanna get, understand who's here. So just maybe post in the chat. Um, how many projects are you managing? Like in terms of maybe number of projects per month, is it two or three, is it 10 or 20 or hundred? Um, so go ahead, post that in the chat. And then what's the number one challenge you might have with selling and delivering projects? So how many projects are you managing? And then um, just number one challenge with projects, people or process or templates, the tools, um, what might that be? Yeah. And then, so yeah, project management is often the Achilles heel for MSPs. Um, I've actually had Achilles heel, heel issues and those, those have been solved, um, but also on projects that we focus so much on monthly um, MRR and making sure they're profitable that we forget about the projects or um, just assume that they can't be profitable. And so I, I've been there as well. Of They were unprofitable, they were, they were late and actually almost lost my business, almost went bankrupt. I was literally looking at like, if I have to move out of the house, what am I doing with my wife and kids? So literally having, that was going through my mind. And one of the projects we did eight, nine years ago, I quoted at 200 hours and ended up taking seven or 800 hours. And we lost the other clients, we lost them and lost the other clients we added in that year. So it was, it was brutal, losing money everywhere. And that's one of the reasons why I got into building top left is improving that flow, helping the team to deliver these projects and a better client experience. Um, and that was all while having ConnectWise as our PSA is I had the data, had all the tickets, had all the projects, but didn't know what conversations to have. Techs weren't sure on what they should be doing next, all those things. Um, and that's where I saw in our, in our development teams who were doing well with tools like Jira, Jira with a, the Scrum and Kanban. So I'm like, how do we apply that in the IT world? So that's, that's how Top Left started. Um, so I believe that done right projects can be profitable, a really good experience for the client, that they get it done on time, on budget, communicated well, they know what to expect. And our team doesn't have to be burnt out doing it. They can feel energetic and excited to get uh, work on these projects every day. Um, so to get that success, um, I think there's th three big parts, which is about today is what happens before the client signs the project. So in those projects I did, we didn't really have a good statement of work. It was me putting 10 or 20 bullet points together and some rough numbers in Excel. And I'm like, yeah, I think it's about 200 hours, 10 hours here, 20 hours there. Um, so having a really good statement of work. Number two, what happens after that commitment is made? How do we deliver on it effectively? And then how do we third? It's also very important is how do we manage the commitment so we don't take on too much and burn out our team, overwhelm people. That's a huge issue in IT industry. A lot of burnout, 57% um, of people working in IT report burnout in the last year. It's huge. Um, and obviously it impacts the clients because we can't deliver on expectations. So today we have a special uh, guest, uh, John from Scopestack. Uh, Scope Welcome, John. Hey, thanks, um, man. Yeah, so I, I think his pre-sales platform is a natural tie-in with what we're doing at Top Left. So that's what we'll get into today. Um, so John's going to introduce himself and provide a short demo, and then we'll hand off to Matt to do the same on the Top Left side. So over to you, John. Yeah, I appreciate it, Wim. Yeah, I appreciate it. So um, my name's John, one of the uh, founders of Scopestack. So we've been around for about five years. And um, prior to that, I've managed a team of solution architects, pre-sales engineers for some rather large like IT services companies. And, and everywhere I worked, it was always spreadsheets and word templates as the main mechanism to get this work done, right? And you start talking about very highly paid resources or just resources that um, have a very finite amount of capacity. Like you really want them to be focused on the right things. But at the same time, right, you, you had sales saying, hey, we need a statement of work faster. So our option was to give them crap <laughs> uh, just so we can get out the door faster or is, hey, so let's spend the time, do the due diligence on it. It's going to take a little bit longer, but I think there's going to be a better client experience. Instead of having to choose one of those two things, like how could we give the detail, make sure we're accurate, as well as have the speed that we need um, just to drive revenue through the account. So 
Um, that's really where Scopestat came from. It, it was all built from the ground up just to solve a problem that we personally had. Um, and, and I know, you know, women, Matt and team are like, they're doing the exact same thing. So they had a pain, they're building around it. And I think it's just, you know, the, the best way to have platforms being built out. It's not this like thing we're building in, in, in theory. It's a, we've lived it, we've been there. And, and so how do we fix it for ourselves first? And then we can take it and help fix it for other organizations. But um, yeah, let me, you know, walk through um, a demo. Let me know if you can see that okay. Yep. Cool. All right, so I'll, I'll just kind of walk through the process, um, what it looks like to scope out a project. At the end of it, we'll go through our project approval workflow, and I'll push the project over to manage from Scopestack, and then that's where the top left team will take it from there um, and kind of walk you through that process. So um, what you'll see here is I'm going to click create new project. And um, what I'm going to do here is associate it to a, um, an opportunity coming from Salesforce. So I'll just choose this one right here. Um, what you'll notice is it filled in the project name, client name, you know, some address information that we needed and um, the relevant information here. And so then I'll just, I don't need that right now. Just click save and we'll move on. Really, this is the meat of the platform, right? So if I just collapse this down, you know, you'll see professional services, managed services, third-party services, um, really the core of what we do, right? We want to make sure that it's easy to scope all three of those. So what I'll do is I'll start with a, a project-based or a project, professional services project. And so I really have three, four different ways to add services to a project. So one is I could just start building it out, you know, plan phase, compute, it's a custom compute thing, service, you know, it's gonna take four hours. It's gonna be done by an engineer. Um, and then we can also add a, you know, custom step to this project. And it's gonna take four hours again, and it's gonna be a technician. All right, so I could go through and just build it out as I go. The cool part about the custom is that we can then uh, select this and say, hey, submit to settings because we want someone or i want to save this for later because i want to turn this into a standard i think that's something we'll be doing a lot more work of when you and i were talking about that earlier right like maybe they, we don't have a standard built for it yet but we're going to take the time and build it out on this first one we're going to save that and then we can create a standard from it later so now we're ready to roll anytime this project comes across um, our desk in the future one of the other ways or a couple of the other ways are um, I can do what we call it a blueprint. So a blueprint is really a collection of those predefined services blocks built into a solution. You know, so maybe I'll talk about a network plan design install. So we're going to have a project planning kickoff, a design session. We're going to install a couple routers and a couple of switches. And so when I click that, you'll see it automatically built those services into the project for me. Now, again, what you're seeing here, just, um, just to clarify, is you're seeing the service um, or the particular task potentially of, of what you're going to deliver, how long it's going to take to deliver it, um, and then which resource level um, is going to be doing that work. All right, and so that's how we're getting to the services pricing element of it. Now, um, what we also have, and, and what we could never find out there was, right, we could find proposal automation, um, quoting products out there and they did a great job for quoting product and gen like generating generic proposals. I'm mean, again, you can customize those too, but we still had to use like spreadsheets to price out the service. And there was really no congruity between the language in that system and what we were pricing out. Um, and so really what we're doing with Scopestack is how do we combine the pricing element of it with the ability to correlate language to these particular services. So what you'll see here and again, a large part of this varies, you know, depends on how, how detailed you want to build out your statement of work. So we have a lot of clients that will literally just do the bullet point thing that Wim was talking about. And we can make that fast and that's pretty easy. Um, but we have other clients that go the opposite direction. It's a very much a narrative approach around like paragraphs of services content um, per an individual service and subservice. So really you can go either way. Um, so what you're seeing here is, right, we can see all the language. Um, and if we ever wanted to change that, we can change it um, specifically to like relevant to this project. And if you have Grammarly, it'll actually work on these uh, <laughs> these fields if you want, which is kind of cool. Um, 
And then you can also see like, hey, I want to see any changes that were built out um, in this. So if we made a change to the document or the language, you could see that, you know, what is different. That's really helpful when you're going through and, and reviewing and approving these projects um, before they go out the door. So once I've added those services pieces, um, I can also come in here and we have a way to automatically add project governance. So things like project management, documentation, contingency, like you're seeing on the screen, in the background and settings, we can say, hey, every single project, we want 20% of PM to be on top of the level of effort piece. So it's a great way to just make sure these things are scaling, but also that they're just, they're, they're added to every project, right? I know I used to forget this stuff all the time. So just how do we make it very easy to, to add this kind of stuff to a project? Now, once we've gone through and we reviewed, you know, our work, um, well, we haven't reviewed our work breakdown. I'll show you that now. Um, so I can come down here and review my work breakdown. And this by phase alignment is actually what we would start building over and manage um, when we're ready. So like, like I'll show you in a minute, this will become a, a, a ticket and these will become tasks within that ticket unless we want all these to be tickets. But the idea is like, we want there to be alignment between what's being scoped and then what's being delivered and, and ideally managed, right? And that's where, again, the top left um, team comes in. So um, and then coming down to the PS pricing section, so I can see all the roll up resources, how many hours, effective rate, revenue cost. And again, we have the, uh, um, the ability to support different rate tables, which can be used for like contract vehicles or client specific pricing. Just make that really easy to, to uh, make sure you're using the appropriate rates um, while you're scoping out this project. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go through like a, a quick project approval. Um, because we need to get this project approved before we can go ahead and push it over to manage. So I'll click approve. Um, and with that, what we'll do is um, you'll notice this approval screen right here. So you can see this is currently sitting in my, my queue to review because we had services associated to data center and networking um, in this project. It's a great way to say, hey, you have certain subject matter experts that you wanna make sure get visibility into a project if you're scoping services in their domain um, and just give you visibility into who, who's reviewing it, um, who needs to review it, so on and so forth, right? Um, it could have gone to a business approval step, but we actually didn't meet the threshold for um, revenue or cost. I can't remember which one um, in order to send that over there. So now it's all, already approved. So with that, um, forgot to do one of the important parts. Um, so I'm gonna generate a document from this. So um, generate uh, a statement of work. And so the idea behind this is we can generate different flavors of documents depending on um, what we need. So imagine going into a client, um, scoping out a project and generating like a services brief or a very high level draft summary of a statement of work um, to, to qualify the opportunity to make sure you're on the same page. And then client says, hey, yeah, that's great. Let's move forward with the full statement of work. Well, the way I used to do it was, okay, well, that's going to be another week because I actually have to go do all the work now, um, right? And then, you know, by that time, your client has given them a statement of work and it's just a whole thing. So, um, right, the idea here is like we can generate different. And, and this one took a little bit longer because we were giving a very detailed statement of work, um, this example. I don't know if you can see my whole screen. There you go. Can y'all see that? Women, Matt? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so here's a statement of work. This is just using our kind of like pre can format. Um, and so what you'll see is um, building some of this out. We can fill some of this in just for speed's sake. But um, here's a scope of work. So some of this was like some static with some kind of dynamic stuff peppered into it. But then this is all dynamically being built out mm. based on what we chose in the UI. So the idea here is um, regardless of who's scoping, you want to present one voice to your clients, right? You want there to be consistency. And that also helps with the delivery side when the engineers are doing the work. They know, ideally, they're a part of like defining these standards with you. And so they know what to deliver and kind of uh, close that loop there. And all the way down to assumptions and deliverables, right? Like this is all coming from those language fields and then down to pricing. Um, and so this entire section can be changed by a dropdown from within scope stack. So um, once we have that, we're like, yeah, uh, I wanna make uh, my project managers happy. So I'm gonna click create PSA project, um, a start date, and then an estimated end date. These are just required for the API. 
um, which project board do you want to put it on? And you want to create, you know, tickets for certain items. And so what I'll do, I'll go ahead and submit that. Um, and I'll roll over to ConnectWise um, and show that project. Matt or, or Erwin, are there any questions you want me to answer? Well, I see a couple of chats, but I haven't read them. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll read them out uh, once you're um, finished with the, the demo part and then we'll answer okay. the scope. All right, stack. cool. Let me get rid of this uh, meeting control thing. Here we go. All right. Uh, maybe just one so, question, sir. Is, uh, is it only ConnectWise yeah. Manage that you support or also Autotask? Also Autotask. Yeah. So um, those are the two that will generate the projects um, for. Um, and then we also integrate with like Salesforce and Dynamics and HubSpot and some other stuff on the front end CRM side. Um, yeah. Thanks. So I'll, I'll show you that here in a second, but um, let me go find this project over here in my project. Does anyone remember which board I sent that to? Is it this one? It was this guy right here in the top left. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. Um, and so you'll see the budgeted hours and also the work plan that will automatically create so again, we, we created based on the phases, like what um, tickets and, and all that fun stuff you wanna see in there. So again, now there's alignment between like what we built out over here and then also um, what was being scoped on the front end. And now at the same time, we can also write back and update the opportunity. So now sales and oper that sales opportunity is updated with the appropriate services, revenue costing information as well um, from there. So, so that's it. Um, again, from like scoping a project, there's a lot more depth and, and things I can go into there, but I'd, I'd be glad to do that um, offline um, for anyone. So um, yeah, any questions you, you want me to answer, Matt or Wim? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, one is, let's say we're doing a project that we haven't really done before. So I'm not comfortable to do the whole thing is completely all in flat fee. And then, but let's say it's yeah. like a SharePoint migration, file server to SharePoint. And we want to allow a certain number of hours or a max hours or budget on some part of it, one ticket or a phase cannot be done in here. Yeah. So um, one of the things that you can do are well, a couple of different ways to solve that. Um, so you can either, um, actually, I think, let me take that. I think I have a migration here. I just make it easier. It's not the exact same thing, but you get the point. Right, so I can increase these hours if I want to. Um, no, so like single sign-on, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna go. I mean, I can add capacity in here to, to do more work and have it. And then what I would ideally do is just build this out as like time and materials, right? And so go out here and do, um, you know, from a PS pricing and then generate um, this and then just regenerate my document. And basically what at, the, at that point, it'll be, you know, that risk is now on the, on the client more than anything, because so we're going to tell them, Hey, this is the rate. That's the entire project then. Right. Um, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not saying we want um, the, the entire project to be fixed fee, but then let's say something that is more complicated. It's because of the client to be able to set the expectation that, Hey, on this area, um, we, we've allowed for 10 hour hours. If it's more, on that ticket, then we'll bill you more. I, we're we're going to let you know and get your permission. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's where, you know, just to, to keep it simple, um, you can either, so what we've seen that several clients do is go out a fixed fee and then they'll just say for anything over and out of scope, right? Here's the bill rate that we'll use for the, the rest of the project. And you're right when like they'll, um, you know, We'll, get, we'll give some governance language around. We're not going to just charge you for it. We're going to get your approval and, and we're going to make sure that all aligned there. Um, as opposed to like, you know, trying to, to build all that in the UI necessarily. I think it just makes sense yeah. to have some language, whether it's a term and condition or, yeah. and, and quite honestly, that could be a part of any of your projects. Whether you do fix for your TNN, that could just be in there. Um, That's or good. you could do things like... Yeah. Yeah, or you can do things like build it out in like a separate phase. And so we have a way to manage phases. And so you could have one called optional, 
right? And like have all your services in optional phase and have a billing milestone associated to all your phases. And then say, um, hey, these are the things that if we have time or if there's budget, um, you know, well, additional things that you can add to it. So I think a number of different ways around that. It's a good question though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So some questions in the chat here is, with the ConnectWise integration, does that pull in all the client details? Um, yeah, so our, our off-the-box integration pulls in from the opportunity level, some, some of the basics like client name, opportunity name, address, um, and I think some contact information. Um, now, again, um, we have the API integration. We can probably just pull, pull more fields into, you know, you can create all these little drop-downs and these things as many as you want. Um, you know, it kind of depends on what information, but we, we do get all that context over here. Yeah. yeah. Good. And that question was from Jamie. Good question. Yeah. And then Jamie has another question. Can you bulk delete the service catalog in case you have double ups or services that are being retired? Yeah. So um, if you go back here, on, that was one of the things that I didn't actually show. So two things. Um, so we have a service catalog where there's a bunch of like, pre-built services. And this came from a, another uh, mature MSP that um, I think we all know. And um, the idea here is like, hey, here's a good starting point. You can pull these into your account, modify them and make them your own. Um, so you just don't have to like, you know, invest all that time to start getting some value out of the platform. Now, with that being said, um, what that does is it brings all these into um, this professional services section right here. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. So what you can do is you can come into your line of business um, and you can either delete the service category and that will take all the services with it, or you can delete the line of business, which will take even more. <laughs> uh, and then we also have like a white button if we need to, as like a nuclear option. Um, but only we have that power. So you have to let us know if you want that one. Um, just so you don't accidentally delete all of your stuff. But yeah, you can uh, mass delete some of that stuff. Yep, awesome. And then Tony has a question about integration with QuoteWorks and Edelize. Edelize for all the product information. Yeah. Um, so again, we were really wanting to build out a platform that was all around the services side. So it was it was never like top of mind for us to go build up product and like Edelize and like the expensive integration piece with um, them. Um, however, uh, we did continue to get feedback around, hey, we want to, it's not just a, we want to present on our statement of work, both product and service. Okay. So we have a method to, um, you know, you can import a CSV or bill of materials into scope stack, or you can pre-build some of those SKUs here. Um, and any new SKU, we will update your ConnectWise product database, but I'm not currently pulling them in here um, from ConnectWise or, or from Utilize or any other product information database. Um, one, just one quick note on, on the product though, like if you do have products built in scope stack, we can actually say, I don't know if you, so I didn't actually come in here and like add any of these products. We associated them to a specific service. And we said, hey, anytime we add the service, we wanna make sure this product or license is included um, in the project. And so uh, that's what we're doing today. So to answer your question directly, Tony, we, we don't integrate with Edelize um, just purely from a, Kind of product orientation and then also just it's crazy expensive so just being candid so but like so we, we have quote works and utilize in our msp um but we could if we had the quote there for the hardware let's say switches servers whatever bare metal stuff we could dump that to a csv the line item details and it import it here yeah yeah so that way you can have um it all on one page um or again you could even just create a product line and this individual project with the total roll up of product, right? And have an appendix or have like more detail in your quote. Um, so you can have as much or as little detail as you wish really at that point. Okay, so you can do a line item, really? and there's $10,000 of hardware and then the appendix yeah. has the quote works nicely formatted PDF, um, just merge that into the bundle. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and so again, like we built all these like fields based on a lot of stuff we were seeing connect wise and other quoting platforms. So there's alignment here between a, a bunch of that stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, you've obviously really focused on nailing the the scoping side, statement of work, 
um, the yeah, I mean that that to us is where like the gap was, right? Like I feel oh, like yeah. there's some really great quoting products out there. Um, you'll mention most of them. Um, you know, I, I think maybe one day we'll get better there. Um, if anything, we're going to start integrating with like again other ag agnostic type kind of like product product uh, centralization tools, maybe like Needleize or some other ones. There's some other ones out there that are up and coming too. So yeah. The Uh, another question from again. I don't. I don't want to take another question. Okay. Do you want? Should we do? Um, I'll see if we got time for some more of these at the end. Yeah, I'm gonna give Matt some time to to do yep. his thing. So, again, scoping. We would deliver this uh, project and manage, and so and then Matt, I'll let you kind of. Um, yeah, because you have the best in terms of like you can have the best contract and statement of work, but the team's got to be set up to deliver on it. So you're on time, on budget, and the client's happy, and everyone knows what to do. So, um, yeah, what's the uh, magic solution there, Matt? Yeah, well, let me show you. Um, and I was, I was kind of chuckling to myself there, John, as you you know you made this uh, made this project in Connectwise, and you immediately you couldn't even find it, um, which kind of demonstrates yeah. <laughs> our kind of the problem that Top Left solves a bit is that just uh, well, you know once the the CR the uh, ConnectWise and Autotask and such are really good places for keeping like the central repository of the data, but uh, they're just they've never invested in the visualization like better tools to actually help understand it. So, you know, like Wim mm -hmm. was describing, we uh, we needed some better tools ourselves to um, to actually run these projects uh, and help desk too, and uh, so that's where Top Left came from. Um, yeah, so let me show you just briefly. I mean, I think a lot of you have have seen some of these things uh, already. So I'll I'll keep it brief and uh, yeah, just show you the highlights. Uh, so this is a this is a Kanban board. This is showing it the you know same data that you already have in Connectwise or Autotask. Uh, it's just showing it in a way that's a lot easier to understand. It's a, this is a can you know it's how Kanban is with uh, uh, you know the most notable thing here is the columns that go left to right. Columns indicate the, the real key stages of the work. So, and each of these boxes here represents a project ticket, uh, or you know, could be a help desk ticket too. Um, so we're just immediately looking at these things based on okay, what stage is this work in? Because that's always important from uh, from a project manager's point of view, also from an engineer's point of view. They won't need to know. You know, um, what things do I have on the go right now? What things are coming up very soon? What things are already completed? What things are kind of broken? You know, waiting on somebody. Things like that, and this sort of view um, it pre it presents it uh, presents it for you essentially. Instead of going to ConnectWise or Autotask, where they just dump a big table in your face and say you figure it out. So that's the big difference here. Um, it's uh, showing the data straight out of ConnectWise and Autotask, so, um, so you don't you, know, you can uh, set it up immediately and start to get benefit out of that. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, drag and drop tickets between the columns here. So uh, you know if you Go in here and you, since you can see it you can see if there's a problem like something is incorrect like a ticket you know is already done still in progress uh, you know really easy to just drag it over to the completed column and it will go it'll uh, actually when you do that it would go and change the ticket status in connectwise or auto task so everything's always up to date and um it also just ex can really accelerate your technician's day uh or you know you as a project manager can accelerate that with uh ways to change data about the work right from top left like uh, you know budgets and uh, and due dates and who's what which engineers assigned to the tickets and and things like that engineers can enter time in the ticket and so on so uh you know very useful for a variety of reasons uh this is an example here of a board that's showing us uh, um is grouping these tickets in this horizontal lane here so basically this is an example of a board that's showing us the details of more than one project at once. Like we have, you know, as some Azure migration here, we have a CRM upgrade, we have followed by an email migration. So uh, this is a view that neither ConnectWise nor Autotask gives you at all, where you can see multiple projects, but you can, you can actually see the, the tickets within multiple projects all at once, um, which is what an MSP project manager needs. So, so this is super useful. Uh, I remember when we first saw this, we could just immediately see uh, a couple of projects that were still open, but they only had you know, one or two tickets left. These are kind of older projects. They were almost done, but not quite. And so uh, that, you know, the, 
ConnectWise for us was hiding that, but we could see it immediately in that case. Um, <clears throat> let me show you another variation here. Uh, as a project manager, you always need to know who's working on what, who's uh, you know who's assigned to the tickets, or if some one of your engineers is getting really really busy compared to the others. And so this is a variation that's showing mostly the same tickets, but it's grouping them instead by uh, who's assigned to the ticket. So this answers questions about, like I said, who's too busy, who's not busy enough, who's got some uh, some problem work that's getting stalled and things like that. Uh, yeah, because it will even uh, it'll even highlight some of the work that is going slow. Like this one, you know, a ticket if a ticket is in progress for more than a few days, that could indicate a problem with that. We want to always see this work moving forward, not getting stalled. So if it is sitting there, it's really helpful to know about that. And this red tag here will. Uh, Will notify us about that. We can you can do similar things with you know tickets that go over budget or you know tickets that are approaching their due date and things like that. Uh, another view here, looking at the uh, the project portfolio overall, um, is this view. So these cards are not uh, tickets anymore. These are our top level projects. So uh, John, when you made the you know exported that statement of work into the PSA, uh, what the result in top left would have been a new card appearing here representing that project that that's now cool. on the PSA. Yeah. And, uh, so it would have been easier to find. And uh, yeah, so this gives us a good overview of the whole portfolio, what's in progress, you know, what's new, not planned yet, and things like that. Even here is notifying us about some problems, a project that's already over budget. Here's one that has a, uh, uh, that one is warning us that the estimated start date is approaching within a couple of days here. So it, it makes sure that we know about that. So uh, yeah, definitely um, here we have the software that's helping us understand what's actually going on instead of you know the PSA just tossing the data in our face and make us uh, make us figure it out. Um, now one last thing, I like and I have way more to say about that. Like we've done some, you know, a number of webinars just related to project management, but I think this is a good, just kind of a good overview. Uh, a basic view of what we do. I'll just mention one other thing. It's kind of new that we've introduced. Um, we have heard from MSPs that they do have problems uh, with communicating with their customers, um, you know, giving them updates about their projects. And so to help with that, not long ago, we introduced uh, the client portal option. Uh, so that is where basically you can you can grant access to a board like this, you know, probably not this one, but some of the other views. You can actually invite your own customers to view those boards themselves. So just to get direct access in there and that can help them so they can, whenever they want, they can come in and see where these tickets are. They can see if anything is waiting on them. Uh, they can even add notes into the, onto those tickets uh, if you wanna permit that. And so it can really streamline the communications with the, uh, between your project manager and, and the customers there with your clients. Um, and it was something brand new that we're just kind of introducing right now is uh, that client portal is, going to be available in uh, in cloud radial. So for anyone who uses cloud radial as sort of a, a single pane of glass for their customers, um, the project stuff is going to be available in there. Uh, it can be done. Uh, it can be done today, actually. We haven't uh, um, kind of the introduction is happening this week at IT Nation. Cloud radial's uh, got, a, got a bundle. So we'll be sending about, out some information about that. But that's, that's a new exciting feature that we're offering now. And uh, does that wrap up everything I was going to say? I think it does. Yeah, so <laughs> very, very brief. But uh, if anybody else wants to um, know any more about that, just go to topleft.team. And at the very top, there's a there's a button to say, get a demo. And uh, certainly, if anybody is new to Top Left and wants to know more details, then we will be very happy to tell you. <clears throat> well, Matt, I think that's so powerful. Right? I mean, I, I told you about someone the other day that was asking us that. So. Again, like we're we're scoping, we're doing all this stuff, but they're like, hey, could we give clients visibility into the the status of that project and all this stuff? So I think that's huge, man. So congrats on that. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. And that's the course there. Good. So yeah, yeah. Thanks for showing that, Matt. Like the, the swim lane by by phase and seeing the totals of the time everywhere, so you can see where are we off track. Um, I've just seen it so so much in the often in the past that the project is say 100 hours, and we've we're under budget because there were 80 hours. We haven't done the key stuff, and we and we're going to be over. So we've got to see those early warning signs at the ticket level and the phase level is so important. 
to be watching that as it happens every day and keep that work flowing and unblocked and nothing getting neglected. So, yeah. so hopefully that helped you there, Josh. Um, oh, you're, oh, you're actually looking at the project scoping side and somebody else had a question about visualizing projects. Oh, that was Tony. Is there anything else you'd like to see there, Tony, on just seeing all your 62 project is a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is there anything else we can go back and uh, highlight for you? Good, good, good. And then the Jamie had a question about, is this a predefined workshop or something like that? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there. Uh, do you understand that question, uh, John? Um, so the product no. is used as a predefined <laughs> workshop or something like that um, for his cyber and consulting team. Not sure you might have to drop it. Yeah. Jamie, Jamie, what you mean there? Yeah, so Jamie, I mean, feel free to clarify. I mean, if, if anything, um, oh, the product component. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a um, couple of different things there, right? Like we, um, can I share something else, Matt, real quick? Yeah. So, okay. Share. So I'll just go back to project I had up. Sorry about that. Can you see that? Okay. So um, one of the other pieces, and I'll just go into one of these other projects that we had built out, is the ability to like, um, and again, we were talking about this early, and so maybe for like Tony or in your business, like there's a lot of projects going through the platform. Um, to this and we have a we have a function called surveys and it's it's really this um this method for i have one built out for wireless survey but the idea is like i have a bunch of like non-technical questions and so jamie what made me think about it is also um right the workshop idea or whatever like there are certain things that like i need to have inputs i need to have some questions answered whether it's like onboarding new clients or hey we're gonna go do a wireless survey or firewall install or ice or whatever it may be like if you can just answer some basic things for me, then we can actually programmatically recommend the right services, right? So like you start thinking about whether it's sales or junior engineers or something like that, building out a scope. Well, how do you give them and equip them to, to do more? And so based on how we answer those questions, it actually recommends a readiness workshop. And again, that's just the product thing that we used again and increased project management and we calculated like 59 APs for wireless site survey. So like just this idea that we can now um, start kind of programmatically recommending services um, gives just it kind of opens the doors right to a lot of other users in the platform to make sure that we're scoping projects and responding to opportunities, not only faster, but just more accurately. Right. So like that's another piece that I, I think is really relevant for, for organizations that are starting to see a lot more of that product or uh, services throughput um, to, to address. And so then you can, and come in here and say, hey, I had this survey. We answered all this. Oh, I actually want to update this. So, you know, I spoke to the client again and it was actually, I forgot a zero, <laughs> which might make a difference um, in the square footage of a site. So now I have like, I've calculated 588 APs and we actually added a SAN for whatever reason, just for silliness. Um, and so I'll review and apply this to the project to um, and just reapply those recommendations or rather update those recommendations on the project. So just stuff like that, right? And you can have all sorts of like surveys built out like that to make sure that your team is is scoping the right stuff. And it's it, it's not always dependent on you or the very smart people or also like the highest paid people in the organization to do that um, from there. So I, I don't know if that answered the question at all, Jamie, um, for you, but it kind of made me think about like a, a workshop in general, and like how do you make sure that you're answering the right question that will be, need to you know relate to a services project? Hope that helped. Yeah. Yeah. So automatically took the survey information and, and built out the scope. Yes, Tony, to, to answer your question. Good. Okay. Yep. And it, yeah, yeah, I talk with a number of MSPs. I sell a lot of hardware, a million plus a year. And um, 
which is where quote works and Eli's and stuff are great. So I think there's still a place for that. Um, and, but everyone's going to yeah. decide how that fits the flow. It's like, is it just an attachment? Is it separate? You deliver them separately, the services and the hardware and get them approved separately. Um, everyone's got to kind of figure that out. Um, yeah. And, and I think that's just where like, now that you have this kind of function built out and, and again, any web-based platform now, like now you can start figuring out how those integration pieces work and then you can just build like, and then, then flow that just makes a ton more sense. Um, and then, can we answer that last question, Well, uh, Yeah, I think that's that a, that's a really good question. So I think that's where I've struggled. Like you have one person doing it and they're a bottleneck. So how do we send more of this scoping work down to a junior, a lower level resource? Even if it takes them more time yeah. and you have your senior consultant um, finalize it, right? Yeah, so so for our, for our end, you can either, um, duplicate one of those steps and add another resource or again like what we're doing is we're pricing this out to the client how you eventually staff it is really up to you so we're making suggestions and we're, we have predefined like recommendations on the level of engineer or resource that should be doing the work that doesn't mean you have to staff it that way right i mean if you could get it done with a junior engineer you potentially have some more upside in, in terms of gp on that project um but again, yeah, it's very easy just to like duplicate a step and then add another resource um, uh, for that project. So we have like multiple resources on a particular service. I don't know if y'all saw that, but absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, there's two parts. There's doing the actual work. Let's say the server migration, but there's doing it, but then there's scoping. It can be a bottleneck as well. On I've seen that my team, like the senior guys, he's so busy with client meetings and everything. Doesn't have time yeah. to do all the um, proposal work. So obviously the templates and the structure you have really help. Um, but if we can get a, somebody else in there, um, that's going to help, right? So, yeah, like allow that engineer to like build out some of the, the reasoning around like why services are chosen, yeah. let them answer non technical, right? And like free that person up to, to engage in more profitable business, yeah. ideally. Um, okay, good questions there. Um, if People want to learn more on project management. I did several episodes on our podcast with James Davis from uh, PAX 8 in um, Australia, all around scoping the whole project from start to finish like this. So what are the common issues, how to work through it, the who, who, who should be the project manager, how do we set them up to win? Is it about pro uh, promoting a tech to that role? Or is it a career change? Lots of good stuff in there. And uh, James has got a lot of experience in that area. So that's on YouTube as well as um, uh, all the podcast channels. So, so I guess, how, John, how can clients get started with you? Um, yeah, so for us, um, we, we made a change back in April um, when you and I have been talking about it for a long time, but um, just uh, there's a free plan out there. So really, we wanted to be able to put the platform in people's hands to just allow them to start experiencing the value of it. Um, it does have some limited, some limits to it. However, um, we're also offering, like, I think Matter Team will show this whether on the landing page or later, but like uh, a promotional offer for our onboarding. Um, so 25% off on that onboarding fee, uh, which is optional um, in general. So yeah, if, they, if you're interested, go check out our free plan out at scopestack.io. That's a great place to start. And if you want to go into the, to the paid plan, we can start integrating and doing some of that advanced stuff. Um, it's out there. Um, top left buddies. Is a coupon code just to make Matt laugh. That's why we made it. So, and it's memorable, you know. Good. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Huge. But yeah, I think having the help up front to get those templates and stuff dialed in is key. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Good contracts and the governance stuff. That's key. Like you don't don't necessarily need more tools and software, but if we've got a good agreement and governance process. That's um, saves a ton of money. Okay. Hundred yeah. percent. Yep. All right, thanks, John. And then, yeah, over to you, Matt, on um, our promo. Yeah, um, we also wanna help you get set up faster. Um, so we have a, a promo, promo related to that. Uh, we also have a training program we call the Completed Ticket Challenge. And, um, and so that is specifically geared at uh, someone who, uh, you have a problem, your MSP, where is technicians always seem to be starting tickets, but never, uh, never finishing them quite as much. So, uh, you know, we, we had that problem at our MSP, but um, 
Uh, and so we put together just a, a three week series of uh, emails and videos to basically let's say, you know, hey, it's day one, you do specifically this. It's day two, you do specifically this to make it just e easy to be able to, to actually accomplish these things, set up some of the structures and methods to, to finish work before, before you start new work. Um, so uh, we want to offer that uh, with or with, without a trial, like it's, it's open to any anybody who's an existing customer too. We can get, uh, normally, those two, the concierge onboarding, that's just a, that's a one hour call to help you get set up with the recommended boards. We'll do everything for you in the setup. And uh, so normally to those together is $700 or so, uh, but we want to give you basically the cost of the concierge onboarding for free. So it's just $399 in that case uh, with this code, uh, Projects2211. And uh, we will be sending it out in an email to everybody too with, uh, with the recording when it's ready. So uh, so you don't have to scribble that down right now if you don't want to, but uh, yeah, that'll be available. Okay. Awesome. And then if anybody hasn't seen the, uh, we updated the pricing as well. Um, so if anybody haven't looked at the pricing in some time, we've updated that. So I think Tony, you, you were on uh, last year. Um, so we can definitely get a call and go through that and get you back on, so. Just uh, drop Matt or myself a note, and we'll get that call scheduled. Yeah, okay. just really briefly, the the change to the licensing is to make it way more flexible, because we had gotten feedback that it may, it wasn't so easy to understand, or sometimes it was, it was expensive if you just wanted to have like a project manager in there, um, because of some of the restrictions in the, in the licensing. So uh, that has been addressed, and uh, we got a, a plan that's specifically for. Um, managers who want to be using top left to to look at how the work is going yeah good all right if there's a i think we've covered everything there that we planned so if there's no other last minute questions um i can i can hang around for a bit but otherwise we'll wrap it up there thank you john thank you matt thank you all right uh, thanks guys we showed up here so thank you until next time all right yeah have a good one bye bye, bye.